So welcome back aliens. In this video, we'll talk about the content grammar for XML. So in the earlier video, we have talked about the structure grammar, right, which is your DDD. So in this video, we'll talk about content grammar. So in order to work with content grammar, we have to create a schema. So how to do that? Let's create, uh, the thing is, uh, using schema, you can also write the structure grammar. So using DDD, you can only write structure grammar, but using schema, you can write both the structure and the content grammar. Now, how to create a uh, the schema? Right click on your project, go to others, and search for XML schema file. And then here you have to mention the file name. We'll say the, the file name is uh, alien schema dot xsd and it's compulsory to have this extension which is xsd which stands for xml schema definition and if i click on finish we got a xsd file here okay and uh, you can see we have two things we have elements and we have types so we have define a type first so we have to go to source now you can see this is your xml schema let me just expand this okay and we'll take everything on new line so we'll take all this thing on new line Okay, so once we got these three lines, let's uh, focus on the types. So in, uh, before go, before going forward, let's talk about this XML NS. This NS stands for namespace. Now, whenever you talk about XML, so we have two things. Uh, one is URI and the prefix for the namespace. So we have to say prefix. So what is URI? So let's say your definition is stored on the internet and you're, when, you, when you want to fetch something from the internet, we use URL, which is Uniform Resource Locator, right? But this time, the definition of your tags is there in the system. So we use URI, which is Uniform Resource Identifier, okay? And then we have prefix, which is, uh, so let's say whenever you want to work with namespace, so let's say this is your namespace here. To access this namespace, we have to use a prefix. In this case, this is TNS, which is a, uh, the target namespace. Okay, so this is the namespace you are using, and this is the namespace you are creating, a target namespace. So I will specify the uh, namespace here. So instead of saying uh, XML example.org, I will take a Unix, so I will say telesco.com. And even here, we have to mention it as telesco.com. That's my website. And now what next? Now when you want to define the rules or the grammars for the XML, we have we have two types of we have two types. One is simple simple type and then the second is complex type. So when you define the element in which you have an element, example in this scenario, we have an element, inside that element we have one more element that is complex. But let's say when you create a single element, it becomes a, a simple type. So since we have to start with complex, so we'll say complex type, uh, we can specify any name here. So let's say I'm saying alien type here or aliens type to be, to be specific. So we'll say aliens type. So that's the complex type we have to define. And then inside this complex type, we'll be having different elements, right? Uh, we have, basically we have one which is alien. So we have to first provide the sequence tag. So that's a child tag for complex. And inside this sequence, you can specify your elements. So inside this aliens, you have only one element, which is alien, right? So we'll say this is element name and the name of the element is alien. I don't know why I type it uh, T at the end. And then we have to specify the type. So the type here will be string or not string. It will be of type alien. It will be of type alien type, right? Again, we have to define alien type. So this alien type, okay, so we have to define alien type first. Okay, then we'll say close. Now to make it work, so to, to make it work, we have to create a, one more complex type, which will be having alien type. So that was, initially it was aliens type, which is the root tag. Now we have defined for alien tag. And inside this alien type, we have to mention uh, first, you have to mention the sequence. So that's the sequence here. And then after the sequence, we have to mention the element. So inside this uh, alien ele element, we have name and salary, right? So here we'll specify element, name, and then you have to mention the name, which is, let's say in this case, we'll say it is name itself. And the type of data is string. So in double quotes, we can mention string. 
right? So that's uh, element type. Uh, so that's name type. And then the second one is for salary. So we'll say name equal to salary. And the type of salary here, okay, let me just remove this. The type of salary here is integer, right? So that's So that's integer. I guess there is an error. Okay, so the type is integer here. Okay. Okay, this I don't know what's the issue. Oh, salary type is missing. Okay, so now that's that's salary with integer. Now once we got this alien type, so this alien type will refer to this alien type, right? But there's an error. Okay, let's see what's the error. It says uh, error resolving the component. So for that, we have to mention the namespace prefix that is TNS. So this TNS you have to mention here. That means this alien type is be belongs to TNS. Okay, now once we got that, let's go ahead. Now then the next thing we have to specify is the uh, attribute, right? So once we have specified the aliens, alien, then we have specified name and salary now let's specify the attribute now to specify the attribute uh, to specify the attribute for the alien so we have to specify the attribute a i d for this alien type right so we have to specify an attribute here so we'll say attribute tag and inside this attribute tag you have to mention the name first we'll say the name is a i d which is alien id and then you have to specify the type of the id which is as we have seen in the dtd so the type of id will be id itself and then we'll specify the required. So we'll say use. And we can specify the use as required, optional or prohibited. We'll say this is required. This is compulsory to have an attribute. Okay. I think that's enough. That's how, that's all the specified. That, that, those are the things we have to mention here. Okay. So that's, that's how you sp uh, specify the rules. So we have specified the element. It's of type string. So the uh, name will be in type string, it, it will be in integer. But how to apply these rules here? Uh, because we have we are following the rules of DTD in this file, right? So what we'll do is we'll create one more file which will follow the rules for XSD, we'll say others, XML file. And this time, uh, we, we will not say finish directly. We'll say this is new alien dot XML. And we'll say next. Now here we have to select, we have to, we want to create an XML file using the XML schema file. We'll click on next and we'll click on, okay. Here we have to select the file, which is XSD file, which is alien schema. We'll say next. And it will ask you for the root element, right? Because you want to ma make sure that your root element refers to this file. And if you expand it, you can see there's no root element. And there's another no root element exists since the schema provides provided has no global elements. That means whenever you want to work with XSD, we have to provide a global element. Then question arises how to create that global element. It's very simple. Just say element name and we'll say this is uh, we'll say this is global alien. That sounds weird, right? That's global alien. I don't know, again T there. I think because I, I got this habit of typing client client every time because at client we have the same spelling with the with t right, so uh, we have say global aliens and then we'll say type equal to, so the type of this aliens is TNS colon alien type right so we have to use this aliens type here, and that's the end. Okay, so we have to we have to create a global element in this way. Now if I do the same steps if I say new XML here you have to mention the schema file we'll say next. And we'll mention this as new aliens.xml. Oh, I'm creating a schema and for a uh, by default. So let me create, I select a wrong file, we'll say others. XML, we have to create a normal file. We'll click on next. We'll name this as file as new alien dot xml. Uh, we'll say aliens.xml and we'll click on next. Okay, just hold on. I just got some. Okay, so we'll click on next. We'll click on schema here. We'll say next. And here we have to select the alien schema. As soon as we click on next, you can see the root element here. 
right? And then by selecting the root element, just click on finish. It will it will give you the file which we require here. Right, that is your file. So now we can we can specify the ID as let's say A1. So that's the ID, uh, the alien ID. When we can specify the name here. We can say the name is Navin, and we have this salary which is three thousand, right? And let's take everything on new line. So that's okay. So that's how we create an XSD file. Uh, that's how you use an XSD file. So we we have a prefix, and then yeah, we have to mention those two things. So this thing here, this is not a URL, this is a URI, okay? Now what next? Uh, can, I can I create one more alien here? So since we have uh, two aliens, can I create one more alien? So if I copy this code and if I paste it here, for the second alien, if I even if I mention A2 and if I say this is Manoj with the same salary, so you can, you can see we are getting error. It says invalid content for font starting. Okay, no child element is expected at this point. Oh, what that means? That means it is not allowing me to write two things. Now, if you want to go for two uh, two elements inside alien, we have to write one more restrictions here. So, how to do that? We have to add more elements. So, right? we want to add a more alien type object. So, you have to specify two more attributes. So, you have to say max, max occurrence, and we'll say max occurrence, max, max occurrence. Let's say three. And the minimum number of occurrence will say min occurrence that is your one. So minimum occurrence is one and maximum is three. If I go back to the XML, there's no error, right? Because we can have maximum three now. So if I just copy this, paste, there's no problem. Provided we are changing this to three. And if I say paste again, and if, even if I mention it as four, you can see we are getting error because the maximum number of elements allowed is only three, right? So that's the restriction we have added in the schema. So that's min, min, max occurrence and one uh, and minimum occurrence, right? Now we can do something else here. Yeah. So what we can do is we can add some restriction to this value. So let's say this values, the salary should not be less than ten thousand. So let's say if I or, or should not be more than ten thousand. So let's say if I the salary of Manoj is fifty thousand. So there's no error, right? Oh, not this file. If, the, if I make the salary of Manoj as let's say 30,000, there is no error. Even if I say validate, you can see we don't have any error. I want to I want to make sure that whenever a salary goes beyond 10, there should be an error. To do that, we have to create a simplex type. To add the restrictions, we have to add simplex type. So we'll say simplex here. So we'll say simple or not simplex, simple type. We'll name it as my sal, okay, which is my salary. Just take it up. So that's my salary here, and we'll say my salary close. Now in this simplex, we can add something called as restrictions. So this restrictions will have the base type. We'll say this is the base type is integer. So we'll have all integer type of elements here. And in this restrictions, you can specify the minimum minimum value and maximum value. So we can specify the minimum. So we'll say this is we'll say minimum should not be minimum should be more than one thousand. So we'll say minimum inclusive. Uh, we can specify one thousand, and we can specify max exclusive, max inclusive. So we'll say max inclusive, just ten, uh, just ten thousand. So your salary should, cannot be more than ten thousand, right? And if I go back to this file now, and if I say write it, oh no errors. Why right, so? It's because we have created this restriction which is my cell, but the type of my cell is still integer, right? So we have to mention that as my cell here. And this my cell belongs to TNS, so that's TNS colon my cell. Sounds good. Now, if I go back to the XML and we got the error, so your salary cannot be more than 10,000 now. So that's how we can specify the grammar for the structure and grammar for the content. So that is possible with the help of XSD file, which is XML schema definition. So that is from this video. Um, thanks so much for watching and do subscribe for further videos.